Listen, you cannot come down. Today I was in the book of Nehemiah reading, right? And before you knew it, I started crying, right? And the reason why I was crying, I can actually feel what Nehemiah was feeling. I mean, literally. It, it was as um, as a deer panted forth the water brook, so does my soul longeth after. You know, when God placed a desire in your heart, you have a longing to complete it. You have a heart for that particular thing. And that's what was going on with Nehemiah. The king looked at Nehemiah and said, Nehemiah, why is your countenance? sad knowing that you're not sick he said this is nothing but what sorrow and nehemiah said how can my countenance in other words be of ecstatic or happiness right when i know that the place of my father lieth in what in waste that it has not been rebuilt that has been put to rubble he said how can i be over here happy in a good countenance, knowing that that's a place that needs to be with restored. And a lot of us, God has called for us to restore things, not just for our own personal lives, right? Not for our own spiritual lives, right? But for those who are around us. And so God will put this longing in your heart to do a thing. That's why God said, when you delight yourself in him, he will give you the desires of your heart and the desires of your heart will be what pleases God. And Nehemiah building the wall, restoring it, what happens? It pleases God. So the king asked Nehemiah, said, Nehemiah, what is it that you ask? What is it that you need me to do? And Nehemiah said, hey, listen, king, I need you to give me some time off. I need time to go over here and do the work. And I also need you to make straightway plans for me that I can go and come as I please, that nobody will bother me, that I have access to wood to build, to have the timber, to build the pillars and do the things to, to get the work done. And sure enough, the king was with Nehemiah. But listen, Nehemiah was wise. He understood that in going into this thing, doing the work that God had called him to do, that there were going to be some naysayers. There were going to be some pushbackers. Those that were going to try to be some blockers and some stoppers. So Nehemiah understood, hey, listen, I need to go and make measurements. I need to go and look at and see how bad the rubble and see how bad this place is. And so what he ended up doing was going to look at it at night while people were asleep. He went back and forth to see what was going on. And that's how you have to move about. Which means that in night means you're doing it in secret. That's why God said, those things that you do in secret, he will what? Reward them openly. See, a lot of times we try to let people know what we're doing. Hey, I'm about to start this. I'm about to start that. God did put it on your heart, but you're telling everybody, the people that will be genuinely happy for you. And you're also telling those who don't want nothing to happen for you. It, it grieves them to see you succeed. And here you are running your mouth. You've been all open and bright with it. Hey, listen, I'm about to get my degree. Hey, listen, I'm about to get married. Hey, listen, hey, 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 hey listen. You share all what God has revealed to you. And sometimes, a lot of times when God reveals things to you, that doesn't mean he wants you to reveal it to everybody. Even if they're your BFF, even if they're your mom, your dad, right? Your wife, even your husband. There are certain things that you, that God said, hush, hush about it. Hush, hush about it. Wait till you're right at the finish line. Then you mention that thing. Because in that way, it cannot be sabotaged by others, right? And that's what Nehemiah had to do. He had to move in silence, in the dark, to go and check things out. So he could know, oh, I need this much timber. Oh, I need this, I need that, I need this many people working with me. And that's what he did. And just as sure when he got to the place where he needed to be to rebuild and to restore, what happened? The naysayers came and they began to try to mock them, try to talk bad about them. Oh, what you think you're doing? Oh, you, you think this gonna work? This ain't going to work. That wall ain't stable. You ain't doing nothing up there. A fox, this is what they said. A fox can be on the wall and it'll cause for it to fall down. This is what they were trying to do. They were trying to bring discouragement. And that's what we will face. 
I'm telling you the truth. Whenever you're wor working out the will of God, when God is working or working you to will and do for his good pleasure, there will always be adversaries, those that are being used by the enemy to discourage you, to make you think that what you're doing is insignificant, to make you think that what you're doing is a waste. It's a waste of time. You ain't that smart. You ain't that intelligent. You can't run a business. How you gonna be a wife? How you gonna be a husband? You ain't mother material. You ain't father material. I'm telling you, the enemy he will use whomever he will. The enemy will use whatever, whomever he will to bring discouragement to you. And I'm here to tell you today, when you come upon discouragement, that's your sign and your signal from God to let you know you on the right path. Keep on the wall. Stay on the wall. Don't come down regardless of who is trying to discourage you because God has already given you the hunger and the desire for it. So therefore, keep moving. In the speed that God wants you to work. Don't pull back. And just because you don't hear the words. Let me tell y'all something I know. That I have experienced. Is that when you are in the work of God. You'll sometimes be attacked in the spirit realm. Uh, attacked with a spirit. I say a spirit of laziness. A spirit of pushback. A spirit of I do it tomorrow. Well I can wait another day. Listen. Listen. Keep moving forward. This word is for me. Because that's what the enemy um, job is. is to stall you. To stall you so much to where you pause. And when you pause, you press stop. To where you don't complete a thing. And you know we have been called to complete. Why? Because God said he will perfect those things. Right? Perfect means it's going to be completed. Just like God's word when he sends it out. It will accomplish. Accomplish means to complete. God has placed the word within you, which means what? That word is going to be birthed forth. And when it's birthed forth, that means what? It shall be what? Completed. It will be completed. So I'm here to tell you today, don't come down from the wall. Don't come down from your post. Stay the path. Stay in the path that God is calling you to walk. Even if those around you are, are saying it can't be done. Listen, a lot of times you won't. Oh my God, that's good. A lot of times you won't see the example that has been done. A lot of times God wants you to be the first one to do it. So that others can come behind and say, oh, if God did it for them. Oh, I know God to do it for me. I ain't never seen nobody do that. But I, I see it's been done. Now I can do it. We so busy trying to see who else has done it in our family. Who else has been able to do it in our, in our circle. And God said, stop looking for people who've already done it. God said, you just do what I told you to do. And then you will become the one, which will be the example. That's why God says, well, let your light so shine. Who's like his light among men so that they may see the work. And then they will do what? Glorify who? God. We so busy trying to see the light in everybody else before we say, okay, God, now you shine in me. God said, no. Let your light so shine among me. Forget about what other light is shining. Forget about whoever, who, whose else light is shining within them. God say, you just let my light shine within you so that the people can see the work, your work, me shining through you so that they can give God the glory. Step out. And stay on the wall. Don't leave the post. Don't stop until it's done. Don't stop until the job is done. God says you're on the right path. Close your ears to the naysayers. Okay? Close your ears to the naysayer. And work in wisdom. That's what God said. Be wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove. Dove, right? You got to move in silence sometimes. It doesn't mean that you, that, that, that you don't trust people. It just means sometimes people aren't supposed to hear things because if God haven't showed them the vision that he's given you, no matter who you tell, they ain't going to understand it anyway, okay? So trust God and allow him to lead and guide you. And when you do that, no matter who's talking against, no matter who's trying to bring discouragement, no matter what evil thoughts trying to preside, you'll be able to, wear, as God said, put those thoughts into captivity under the obedience of God. And that means what? Every lie, every thought that is contrary to God's will concerning you, it will have to bow down and humble to the truth of God. And that's why God said his truth is our shield and our buckler. So trust God. Don't come down. You can't come down. 
stay on the wall, stay on the post, because when you do, you'll see accomplishment. You will see victory and you will see that God will indeed complete that what he has called for you to complete. That's what God said. He that has promised is faithful, which means that your trust and your faith has to be in God because he's the only one can do what that can what keep a promise. And the word in you is his promise. I hope y'all got this. But if you didn't get the same, rewind it and watch again. But in the meantime, in between time, if you take just a little bit of what I'm telling you and apply to your life to the best of your ability, you won't be able to have the message about why? Because your smiles will always be genuine. Be blessed, stay blessed, be blessed, be blessed, stay blessed, be blessed, stay blessed. Do not come down from the wall. Complete the task. Y'all know what's coming.